Chapter number eight, active filters um, in linear integrated circuits. This is the last chapter that we are discussing right now. Um, so the first thing is what are filters? And we have discussed filters in many of the courses, including the circuits course. And filters are simply circuits that um, let some frequencies pass through them, that is, at some frequencies the output of the circuit will be high and at other frequencies the output will be low that is the circuit will not let those frequencies pass through it so those circuits are called filters that is filters are frequency selective circuits so you have um, four different types of filters low pass high pass band pass and band stop and again most of you uh, should know about these types of filters and based on what type of pass is used with the filter that is low pass high pass and stuff like that basically it tells you that frequency in that region will be able to pass and frequency outside the region will be stopped by the filter circuit so low pass means frequency in the low region low frequencies will be able to pass rest of the frequencies will be stopped high pass frequency in the high region above a high free above a specific frequency in the high region will be able to pass and rest of the frequencies will be stopped and likewise band pass means that a band of frequencies will be able to pass and rest of, of them will be stopped and band stop means that all the frequencies will be passed except a band of frequencies which will be stopped now these are the ideal response of these four types of filter high pass a low pass high pass band pass and band reject or band stop it has both names band reject or band stop so as you can see ideal basically uh, means that at uh, until a specific frequency fc what we call cutoff frequency everything is passed so it shows one so that means the filter response is one and generally when you are writing the output of a circuit output is equal to the filter response h of j omega and since we are j f or j omega whatever you want to call it since we are plotting it in in um, on the x-axis is f frequency in hertz so i can write j f times v input so v output j f v input j f right j f means that it's a frequency it's a function of frequency so if h of j f the magnitude of that is one that means output will be equal to input at all those frequencies up to fc which is the cutoff frequency and after that h of jf goes down to zero that means the output will be simply zero so it will stop all the output above the cutoff frequency and again these are uh, uh, the ideal responses and uh, practically um, the instantaneous cutoff does not exist practically as you will see it is going it is going to be something like this the response of the filter will be something like this for the low pass filter so the cutoff frequency is I mean I, it should be a little higher actually uh, let me go back Oops. anyways the cutoff frequency is going to be let me try this raise this a little bit come on yes here you go so it is going to be something like this something like this so basically at cutoff frequency the response of the filter is approximately 1 over square root of 2 the peak value so if the peak value is 1 this is basically 0 0.7071 so the response of the filter that is h of j omega magnitude of that is 0 0.707 so that's a practical cutoff frequency but again um, the ideal cutoff frequency means that up to that value is going to be one and um, ahead of uh, the if you go beyond that value then it is going to become zero and the same goes for high pass filter that up to fc is zero because it has to stop the low frequencies and above fc is one 
for band pass you have a stop a stop so this is a stop this is a stop and then only a band of frequencies will go through and f0 is the center frequency of the band this frequency is f0 it has two cutoff frequencies which is the lower cutoff frequency fc1 or fcl and upper cutoff frequency fch or fc2 whatever you want to call it fc2 let's since it is one so it has lower cutoff where the band starts and upper cutoff where the band ends and the center value is called the center frequency which is represented by f0 uh, and for the band reject it is the same thing you have the lower cutoff fc1 and you have the upper cutoff fc2 so it is going to be um, the free the output uh, will be input will be equal to input up to fc1 then it is going to be zero up to fc2 and then it's going to become again one above the values of fc2 so again these are ideal responses they do not exist practically but we can go close to these responses if we create uh, the practical uh, filter circuits uh, of higher order higher order means that first of all they become complex and higher order means that when you keep including the values and uh, values of capacitors uh, or inductors or and or capacitor and inductors then the order of the filter keeps on increasing uh, order of the filter depends upon uh, the order of the differential equation that defines that circuit and uh, more reactive elements uh, means that the, the 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 order of the differential equation will be higher and that correspond to the order of the filter so anyways uh, the higher the order the closer it's going to get to the uh, ideal response but again the circuit is going to become more complex but we are not going to study um, the so there are two different uh, categories of circuits so there are four types these four types and then there are two categories and those categories are uh, oh, here this is the uh, practical uh, response of the low pass filter as I discussed with you earlier so in the practical we have three bands instead of only pass band and stop band we have pass band basically up to which the frequency is gonna go through so this will be FC and then you have a transition band and the stop band so this will be what we call F stop so you have the cutoff frequency sometimes it call it F pass as well so you have the cutoff frequency or the pass band frequency and then you have the stop and between those two you have transition band that is it is transitioning from the pass band to the stop band and basically for the practical filters we want this transition band to be as small as possible because remember in the ideal case there is no transition band it is zero so it's only pass band and a stop band so as long as this transition band we keep very narrow that means our response of the practical filter is uh, a good response but if this transition band is wide that means we will let some of the frequencies um, get through the output which are not required because frequencies can still go through the transition band the output is still not zero okay uh, now we have uh, two uh, categories of filters that is active filters that we are going to study uh, in this course and passive filters that we studied in circuit analysis so passive filters are filters basically that are comprised of uh, resistors capacitors inductors combination of capacitors combination of capacitor inductors and so on and so forth uh, passive filters do not require any external source you can basically connect them directly to the input and the output is going to be uh, the filtered version of the input and the whole idea of passive filters um, is that you have reactive elements capacitors and inductors and those reactive elements basically the reactance of those elements change as the frequency change because remember capacitor uh, reactance of the capacitor x of c magnitude of that reactance is 1 over omega c 2 pi fc and x of um, l inductive uh, reactance magnitude of that is omega l or 2 pi f l so as you are changing the frequency uh, if frequency is zero then reactance of capacitor is infinite it opens it, it acts as an open circuit uh, and it will not uh, let anything pass through it if it is connected in series and if it is connected in parallel then of course everything will pass through it because no current is going to go through that 
Uh, likewise, the reactance of inductor is zero at DC when omega is zero and it starts increasing as omega starts increasing. So the whole idea of the filter is that how these components are going to react in your circuit as you're changing the frequency because their value is changing. And based on their value, the output can be determined and output can either be one of the four types that we discussed, low pass, high pass, band pass, or band stop. Now, the passive filters, uh, they do not require any external power, um, but they cannot provide any gain, again, because they, do, they are not acquiring any external power, so they cannot provide a gain in their pass band. The gain, the maximum gain is always one, that is the output can maximally be equal to input, but it cannot exceed input. On the other hand, active filters that we are going to study here, they are comprised of operational amplifiers or any integrated circuit, operational amplifier, capacitors, and resistors. And since you're using operational amplifier, you have to bias the operational amplifier. That means you can provide gain um, in addition to the frequency select selectivity. You can also provide gain in the pass band. So that's one of the big plus of active filter that not only it uh, performs the selectivity of uh, the frequency, but it can also provide gain in their pass band. However, passive filters cannot provide gain in the pass band. But the ease of passive filter is that you don't need the external power supply. However, for the active filters, you need an external power supply to power up the um, operation amplifier. Uh, so that's one of the main differences between the two. However, the filters that we are going to discuss, um, we will still keep the gain to be unity. So the design that we're gonna study, the gain will still be unity for the active filter. Okay, so you go ahead and read this. This is gonna tell you the differences between the two. And in the next video, we are gonna uh, look at what is frequency and impedance scaling.